In June 2018, 960 Sacramento area respondents completed an online survey about livability of California's capital region. Questions covered overall quality of life and satisfaction and asked respondents their opinions about issues related to the community's characteristics, development, education, food security, housing, mobility, and priority issues. When considering the findings from this report, it's critical to understand who took the survey. That is, where is this data coming from? Who were the respondents that gave their opinions and their information that led to the ultimate findings in this report? Respondents came from various areas around Sacramento. The majority, 57%, live in Sacramento County, followed up by 16% living in Solano, Yolo County, 10% lived in Placer County. Majority of respondents were female at 67%. Majority of respondents, 29%, earned $75 to $150,000 a year, followed up by 24% of respondents who earned less than $30,000 a year. Majority of respondents, 56%, own their home, while 32% were renters. 51% of respondents live in a city, 27% in a suburb, and 22% in a rural small town. 64% of participants were white. Age-wise, majority of participants, 38%, were 53 years and older, followed up by 36% of participants who were between 18 and 36 years of age, and then 26% of participants were between 37 and 52 years of age. Quality of life was rated high for most respondents. 78% of respondents in the capital region report that they are satisfied with their quality of life, and 63% of respondents have pride and attachment to the region. The majority of respondents tend to see community characteristics like safety and access to amenities as staying the same as opposed to have gotten better or worse as they have in the past. However, level of satisfaction with quality of life rises with income. 68% of those making less than $30,000 a year are satisfied, compared to 93% of those making more than $150,000. People who live in small town, rural, or suburban areas report a higher degree of satisfaction with quality of life, 82 to 83% say they're satisfied, compared to city respondents who say about 74% are satisfied. Overall, 63% of respondents report that they feel a sense of pride and attachment to the region. Respondents' pride and attachment tends to rise with age and income, with the oldest demographic segment of 55 years and older and those making more than $150,000 and up feeling the most pride and attachment to their community. Finally, those who own their homes, 67%, were more likely to feel pride and attachment compared to those who are renting, 54%. When looking overall at whether community factors have gotten worse, stayed the same, or gotten better, respondents are most likely to say they have stayed the same in almost all cases, with only jobs and overall business climate as noted as having gotten better and stayed the same in equal measure. Blacks consistently note that the factors listed are getting better compared to other racial ethnic groups, with the exception of jobs and other business climate. The oldest and wealthiest demographics are most likely to rate jobs and overall business climate as having gotten better. Younger people aged 18 to 34 years of age note that educational opportunities, safety in your community, and diversity in the community have gotten better to a greater degree than those who are older. In general, respondents feel that their communities are inclusive towards others and benefit from diversity. Most respondents are engaged in some aspect of their communities through attending events or community service. For the majority, those not already engaged would like to be. The majority of respondents feel that their communities are inclusive, however, there are disparities related to those who feel included and where. In general, respondents' agreement with these statements rose with income and with age. Agreement that 
people help each other in times of need, was greater among homeowners than renters. Whites are more likely to agree that the community is welcoming to people like me compared to blacks, Latinos, or Asians. While the majority of people report feeling welcome across race and ethnicity, these responses could suggest that there are some disparities in feelings of inclusion depending on racial or socioeconomic factors. When reporting on the degree to which they interact with different types of people, respondents most frequently cited interacting with people of different ages and were least likely to interact with people of different incomes. Respondents aged 18 to 34 years are the most likely to interact with people of different race and ethnicity, different religions, and different income levels compared to other ages. Those who live in rural or small town areas are the least likely to interact with people of different race and ethnicity compared to the city or suburban areas. What activities do respondents engage in and what are the activities in which they are interested in engaging more? The survey shows that respondents are most likely to have attended a local school arts event, like a play, musical performance, art or dance show, or to have spent time participating in community service or volunteer activity. Fewer respondents have spent time working informally with others to solve a community problem. However, 41% reported that they are interested in doing so. Respondents were least likely to have participated in a political campaign at the state or at the local level, with 44% reporting they have not done so and are not interested. Across the board, respondents who own their homes are more likely to participate in each of the community activities mentioned. In many cases, those aged 55 years and older are the most engaged, with a couple exceptions, especially related to school type activities like sports and arts. In almost all cases, the youngest segment of 18 to 34 year olds are least likely to have participated in the community activities listed. Those who live in a city are more likely to have attended a political rally or an event than those who live in a rural or suburban area. Access to high quality education and neighborhood amenities are important factors in a high quality of life. Overall, respondents were more positive about the community college and four-year institutions than they were about K-12 schools. For the most part, respondents reported a high degree of access to health services and neighborhood amenities. Respondents most frequently reported community colleges as above average in quality and were more familiar with the community college system than other school systems. In general, respondents' attitudes towards educational systems improved as income increased. Those living in rural areas were less likely to rate community colleges, four-year universities, and vocational training programs as above average compared to those living in cities or suburban areas. A minority of respondents rated K-12 schools as above average in delivering skills for kids. Young people aged 18 to 34 years were the most positive about the K-12 school system, rating it above average more frequently than older respondents. Those making $50,000 or less rated K-12 schools particularly poorly overall, with no more than about 30% rating schools above average in any category. Women and renters were less positive about K-12 schools than men and homeowners, rating the K-12 system as above average less frequently. When looking at community colleges and four-year universities, respondents were more likely to rate the qualities as above average. As income rose, so did respondents rating of community colleges. Women rated community colleges and four-year universities lower than men. 18 to 34 year olds consistently rated community colleges and four-year universities better than other age groups. For example, 50% of 18 to 34-year-olds cited contribute to creativity and innovation in the region as above average, compared to 37-38% of those 35 years and older. The majority of respondents report that the community has recreation facilities and parks and fitness facilities, and fewer report that the community has preschool, 
child care, and low-income health services. In all cases, except low-income community health services, those in higher income categories are more likely to report that their community has the services listed. Those making less than $30,000 are the least likely of any group across all categories to report that their community has high quality preschool or high quality child care. There are many ways that the Sacramento region shines. Inclusion, engagement, diversity, and high access are given high marks by poll respondents. However, there are also tensions. Poverty and growing economic disparities are eroding the quality of life and becoming more visible, respondents say. The data show that respondents' concerns about lack of affordable housing, growing homelessness, issues of safety, food insecurity, and disagreement about how we should grow are dividing our community. Many respondents say they encounter unsafe or undesirable conditions across multiple safety and blight categories. Those living in the city compared to rural or suburban areas are much more likely to agree that these factors are present in their community. Furthermore, Sacramento County respondents typically report a higher incidence of these factors. Likewise, women, renters, and those with incomes less than 50000 throughout the region are more likely to report the presence of these safety and blight issues. Blacks compared to whites, Asians, or Latinos of any race report at a lower rate the presence of these safety and blight characteristics. Homelessness has been identified as a significant and increasing issue in the region. In an open question asking, what is the region's most pressing problem? 26% wrote in homelessness, unprompted. Additionally, 52% of respondents noted that they observe homelessness in their community. Sacramento County respondents, as well as women, those making under 50,000, those living in cities, and renters are most likely to report the presence of visible homelessness in their communities. Food insecurity was noted as an issue for 20% of regional respondents. This is about 8% higher than the overall U.S. rate of food insecurity calculated in 2017 by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as 11.8%. Women report food insecurity at a higher rate than men by 12%. Renters and those making less than $30,000 report the highest degree of food insecurity across any other groups. The cost of food is the most significant reason contributing to food insecurity. Physical ability and availability of preferred stores are the two other reasons noted. For those making $30,000 or less, availability or preferred stores was the next most significant reason. 19% of survey respondents or 193 out of the total 960 respondents reported they always, often, or sometimes get food from a food bank or pantry. Affordable housing and growth are important and often divisive topics as our region faces increased housing demand amid affordable housing shortages. When it comes to reacting to different visions of growth and development, Respondents are split down the middle between wanting to remove obstacles in order to speed up on building more housing and slow down on building new housing because neighborhoods are rapidly changing. More than 51% of those 35 years and older, those who live in rural areas and homeowners, preferred slowing down on housing development. 18 to 34 year olds and renters prefer speeding up on building more housing to a higher degree than any other groups. A significant amount of respondents say they have moved in the last three years, 28%, or plan to move in the next three years, 33%. The most mobile in the regional population are 18 to 34 year olds, renters, and those living in cities. 59% of renters and 41% of 18 to 34 year olds plan to move in the next three years. 
Those making less than $50,000 plan to move at a higher rate than those in other income categories. Finally, Asians are both more likely to report having moved in the last three years and planning to move in the next three years compared to other races, ethnicities. People move for a multitude of reasons. The top cohesive category for why people moved in the last three years is to buy a house. However, fewer people are planning to buy in the next three years compared to how many bought in the last three years. People are most likely to move in the next three years to find a better location. Affordability and the presence of well-maintained properties are key characteristics that respondents look for when moving. For those aged 18 to 34 years, the most important attributes they seek in a new place are well-maintained properties, affordability, and high-quality job opportunities. 18 to 34-year-olds value accessible public transportation, access to higher education, and access to a variety of employment opportunities to a higher degree than those aged 35 years and up. 48% of respondents currently live in suburban areas and 37% want to live in suburban areas. Respondents prefer suburban areas with a mix of houses and businesses compared to houses only. 19% of respondents reported wanting to live in rural areas. However, only 5% of those surveyed actually live in rural areas. When looking at reasons for why people have moved in the last three years, cheaper rent was an issue for those making under 30,000, those living in Yolo Solano counties, and renters. Blacks and those making less than $30,000 were most likely to report being evicted or foreclosed upon. Looking into the next three years, people are most likely to plan on moving in order to get a better location. When looking at the type of housing that is quote unquote needed in my community, 75% of respondents identified the need for quality housing for people with moderate and low income. 81% of Sacramento County respondents chose housing for people with moderate and low income compared to 74% or less from other counties as a top priority. The prioritization of housing for people with moderate and low income fell as incomes rose. Women and renters were more likely to prioritize it compared to men and homeowners. However, it remains a high priority across the board.